Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 video. In today's video, what we're going to be going over is I'm going to be showing you how to use the quest system that I've created as part of Copper Gaming. So I recently released this new asset pack and also released a trailer for that. And today is a more in-depth tutorial on how to actually set up an AI giving you a quest. So if you have the pack downloaded, you'll, you can open it up and see something along these lines. And if we were to press play, what we can do is let's go over to this AI here press E to interact with it, we'll see quest started, jump, in the top left it says jump and jump through this course, 0 out of 5 jumps and we can then jump through this here and it will do it perfectly fine like so and we'll get all 5 jumps, the quest is completed, we can press Q and we have this qu completed quest here. I'm going through this bit quite quickly because you should have probably also already seen this so today we're going over how to actually do this. So just to show you this working perfectly from scratch, what I'm going to do is start a new level. So I'll go file, new level, and I'll just do basic like so. Then what I'm going to do is hit control space to open the content browser, go to quest system, demo, AI, and then we're going to drag in QS AI demo. With it selected on the left, you can see we have the details panel here and we have default and all of these things here. So what we need to do first is actually think of what quest we want to do. So what I'm probably going to do is just the jump one again, as that's a nice and basic one. So you can see here we have ID. So I'm going to give this a quest ID and this needs to be unique that you've not used anywhere else. So I'm going to call this new jump ID because I can't remember what I called the other one, but it might have been jump ID. And then we need a name for this. So let's call this how high, you know, jump how high. Uh, description, let's say I need you to jump for me. And then the long description, this is what's going to show up when you open the quest log by pressing Q. So this is where you can then put more detail in here. So in here, for example, I can just say, jump up as high as you can. Not really a long description, but you get the point. And then we have the objective type here. And this is what we actually need to do to complete the quest. So you have Boolean, integer, percentage, float, and custom. Since I want to just see if the player has jumped, I'm not going to do a certain amount of times. I'm just going to do if they have jumped, I'm going to do a Boolean. And then under this here, we have objective completion state. You have the same variable, so bool, int, percentage, and float. And this is essentially what you've just selected. What does it need to do it? So I've got bool. The bool is either going to be true or false. I want it to be true. If you picked int, so integer, you can have it set to five. And so basically when the integer reaches five, the quest has been completed. The same with percentage and float is once you reach that. Here you also have less than. So if you tick that, you can then, so if you tick that and for example have integer, set the integer to five, you can see once it is less than five, it is true. So for example, you have 10 enemies, you need to kill half of them. Once the value is less than five, or I suppose less than six, if you want to kill half, which you have in here, that will then work. So I hope that makes sense. Essentially, it's just going to be the opposite. So once you reach five, or if it's less than five, or whatever value you set it to. And then we have the objective ID and objective description. And this is similar to the quest. However, the quest is essentially the overall thing. And then the objective is the specific thing you need to do. And the reason why these are separate is because you can then add multiple objectives if you want to. And I will go over how to do that as well. So for example, the objective ID is I will just do new jump obj ID. So for me, because I only want one objective, so I'm just going to give it the same name as the quest pretty much. However, it does need to be its own unique ID and separate. And then the objective description here, I'm going to put as jumped, like so, and a question mark, because it's going to have this description and then what you need to do to complete it. So for example, this will read jumped and then have a tick box for bool. Or if it's an integer, it will be jumped and then however many you've done slash how many you need to do. And with that, we can simply hit play and this should be working for us. Once we actually obviously add in our player as well. So let's just go to world settings, do QS BP game mode and now press play. We can walk around. And if we were to go and interact with this by pressing E, you see we've got quest started, how high I need you to jump for me, jumped. And then if I jump, it's obviously not going to do anything yet because I've not set that up. However, you can see this has now given us this quest. And if I go press E again, it's not going to do it as we already have it. And if I press Q, you can see it's in here 
perfectly like so and it says jump as high as you can. Everything we've set up is here perfectly. Now what we need to do to actually have this work so we can actually complete this quest is we need to basically open up the player blueprint or wherever it makes sense for you to have it. So for example if you were to, to collect an item you do it in the item that you're picking up but since this is going to be the player needs to jump I'm going to open up the player blueprint. So let's go to demo QS BP player character or obviously just your player character as well if you wanted and we'll open this up straight away and go to the event graph and go to the jump code here as we obviously want to do it if we've jumped. So what we need to do here is if you've not already in your player character you need to add component and what you want to do is add the AC quest component. Now obviously I can't add it because I've already added it so there you have AC quest component then you want to drag this into the level down here and you want to drag out of this and then find objective. And the objective you want to find is the quest ID that you just set up in the AI. So if we minimize this once again and select the AI, you can see we have the quest over here. So we go to details and we have the quest ID. It's just ID here. So I need my new jump ID. So we can put that in there. And then we also have the objective ID of this quest. So we'll copy that again. So mine is new jump obj ID like so. And this is just going to find the current quest and objective that we want to work on. So then we'll hold down B and left click to get a branch connecting the condition into the return value there to basically see if it has or hasn't found it. Because if it hasn't found it, so it doesn't exist, we obviously don't want to do anything. And if it has found it, then we're going to do the code we want. And so what we want to do is we want to update the completion of this objective. So we'll drag out of AC quest components again and we'll do update. So we'll drag out of objective of the find objective here and do update completion and we'll connect that into true here. So if it does exist, we're going to update the completion of this objective. And now to actually do this, what we want to do is right click current and split the structure pin. Now I've also set this to be a bool, so we want to use that one here. What we're also going to do is drag out of objective again and then get objective completion state and we're going to right click and split the structure pin of that as well so you can get the current state it is in to then update it so for example if you were adding onto an integer what you can do is then get the integer and increase it here as well i'll show you some other examples too of how they're made but we'll go over one here so this is a boolean that we want to do so what i'm going to do is just i could set it to true there by just ticking it or what i could do is just get this value and invert it so we can do a not boolean like so and plug it in there. The only reason I'm doing that is just simply because because I want to show you how to have it from the current completion to an updated completion as well because obviously just for this boolean you could just tick it. But once we have done that so we've updated the completion we want to then also check if it is completed. So we can come out of the objective once again and then just simply do check if completed and then connect that in there like so. So we're getting the current completion status, updating how completed it is, and then checking to see if it is fully completed or not. And that is all you need to do for this. So we can then just connect this into where we jump perfectly like so, or disconnect the one that we have already as a previous example. And now if we were to press play, go up to it, press E, we have this new objective and this new quest. And if I jump, it's not actually worked. So let's see as to why that hasn't worked. And that hasn't actually worked and that might just be because of the weird thing I was doing here by inverting the bool. If I just set it to true instead and hit play, you should see this will probably work. So we have the new objective. Then if I jump, you can see perfectly there. It ticked it. It was true. We completed the quest. It disappeared. And if we press Q again, it's now under completed quests. So very easily and simply like, like that, we've set up our own quest. All we did was drag in an AI into a level, set up what we want the quest to be, and then go into the player blueprint to set up how we want to complete the quest. So now what I'll do is I'll show some other examples and then also how to get it into your own AI as well because obviously you might not want to use the AI that we've created, you might want to use your own. So I'll do that as well as showing, showing some other examples. So if we go back into the overview map that we have created in the pack, we can see some other AI here. So for example, we've done this, so we've got a jump one here and this is how to actually have it count a certain amount of jumps so what we've got set up here is we've got it set to objective type integer and we have an int set to five everything else is all normal it's obviously just ids and descriptions 
And then if we were to go into the player blueprint, let me delete what I've just done here, and we can see that this is what we had before. So this start bit here, you don't need to do for the quest. This is just to prevent you from spamming it because if you just press space five times, it will do it when also we want to have him jump five times. So what it's actually going to do for the quest is it's going to find the quest and current objective like we said before. Then it's going to get the completion. So how many times we have already jumped to so get the integer. Add one to it and then set that as the new completion. Then check if it's completed. And obviously if it's not completed, nothing will happen and if it is so this is equal to five then it's going to complete it so that's how you can do it for having an integer be increasing if we go to this ai over here this is just a boolean so that's kind of the one we've just set up you can see here we've got got it to bool and if it's ticked and what's going to happen is if you walk through a box collision over here which i've set up as a blueprint if you walk through this box collision it's going to find the objective and the id set it to true and then check completed. So again, the same thing that we've just done on the other one for just simply jumping once. This quest over here is another example of an integer increasing. However, this is with a different blueprint, not the player character. So this isn't jumping. This is collecting items. So if we to go over here, you need to collect these apples. So if we open up this apple blueprint, what you can see is that when you do pick it up, it's going to get the quest component so we don't have to add it to this item. So you can do this here as well. You can get the quest component from the player blueprints because that's what we're interacting with through this interact interface here. It will then get the objective as normal. And then the same thing we did for jumping, it's gonna increase this integer and see if it's completed. But the reason why I showed you this one is because it's within a different blueprint, not just a player character. So those are just some different examples of completing a quest. Let's say that you also maybe want to do it in your own AI, not an AI that we have created. So to, to so to show this off, I'm going to very simply make a basic AI here. So let's get a blueprint character and I'll call this demo AI. And then I'll open this up straight away. Let me just add a very quick, simple mesh in here just to show it off. Let's just rotate this and move it down as well. Let's snap it back on there. Okay, there we go. And then what we're going to do is add a component is add a component and we want to search QS quest component. Add that and that's perfect. And then we can compile this and what we can do is go to the event graph. Now we can drag quest component in and out of this, what we can do is create quest like so. And in here you can set all these different things. So what we're gonna do is the class wants to be QS BP main quest. And then you can set the ID, the name, description, Make sure you tick activate and you can set the long description as well. I'll go over these in more detail in a second. I'm going to, I know I'm going a bit quick. And then we can drag out the QS quest component again and then add objective. And then you can connect these up. Quest ID, you want to have be the same as the create quest here. The class, we're going to set to QS underscore BP objective. And then you can again set up all these values that you want. Make sure to tick active. Now what you can do is right click on these and promote to variable. So for example, promote to variable, name it ID, and then set to instance editable, and maybe even expose on spawn if you want to spawn in the AI. And this would mean that if you then drag it into the level, so if I were to drag it into the level here, you can then see we have, under default, we have the ID here. So that's how I was doing on these AI as well. But you might not want to do that. You might just want to do it within the AI here, and that is perfectly fine. And then this here is also how you can have multiple objectives. So you can then simply just add objective again and do this as many times as you want. In the other AI, we obviously just have one objective, but you can have as many as you want. Just add them in as many times as you want here, like so, just giving them different objective AIs each time. But that's how you can have a quest that holds multiple objectives. And you can also do this within your own AI as well. It is as simple as what I've just shown you. But with that, I think that will probably be it for this video. We've gone over how to actually create a quest from scratch, how to create the objective as well, and how to also complete them. And I've also shown you how to do this within your own AI, and also how to add multiple objectives to the same quest. As I've gone over in the preview video and the kind of the trailer for this quest, you can also have multiple quests active at once. You have the quest log. You have all these different options, which obviously again cover within more in more detail in that video. 
There'll be a link in the description down below to this asset pack if you'd like to use it. It's very simple, very easy to use. And of course, we're always there to help in the Discord as well if you have any additional questions or queries on how to set up your own quest system like this. But thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please do make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.